In our last video, we found the zeros for the polynomial functions shown on the screen here. We found the zeros to be x equals 0, x equals plus or minus 1, and x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. We have a little bit of unfinished business with these zeros, so we'll pick up here and use this video to explore zeros and their multiplicities. To recap briefly, zeros are basically the same as x-intercepts. So if I graph a function, such as the one here, I would identify the zeros to be, in this case, the one, two, three places where I cross the x-axis. So just with that graphical understanding, let's continue exploring this example. The reason I want to keep addressing it is when we got to our answers, our zeros of 0 plus or minus 1 and plus or minus square root 2, I wondered if anybody was thinking about the fact that since the degree of the polynomial was 6, we may have expected uh, that there should be 6 zeros. And yet, x equals 0, x equals plus or minus 1, x equals plus or minus 2, that probably only feels like five zeros, right? Just to be clear, um, when we say plus or minus one, that means negative one and positive one. When we, see, when we say plus or minus square root two, that means negative square root two and positive square root two. So again, it, it kind of feels like five, and yet perhaps we thought that there should be six. So this leads to the definition I have here, which is the number of times that a given factor appears in the factored form of an equation is called the multiplicity. The reason this definition applies in this problem is as follows. What we may not have realized is when we set the x squared term equal to zero, that term is being squared. And so that means it's a repeated factor. It's repeated twice. And so that term x equals 0 is said to have a multiplicity of 2. So in reality, this degree 6 polynomial does have 6 real zeros. Moving forward, we'll get in the habit of noting when the multiplicity is other than 1, just so that we feel like we've discussed all zeros thoroughly. Now, I don't expect that example to make multiplicities perfectly clear. So let's talk a little bit more about multiplicities, and then we'll do another example. All right, so I have a couple things written down here. Let's talk through these. It's important to get some clear definitions, but we want those definitions to make sense through the use of examples. So we know graphs behave differently at various x-intercepts. All that this statement means, if I were to draw, oops, draw a little picture to correspond with that first statement on the page is, let's say I drew for you all a random polynomial function such as this one. The statement that graphs behave differently at various x-intercepts means sometimes at, at x-intercepts the graph just cuts right through the x-axis, like this first green one that I just highlighted. Um, sometimes, though, at the x-intercept, the graph appears to more bounce, right? It, it continues um, going in the same direction above or below the x-axis. This third zero showing on this example I just sketched real quick would be more like the first, where it cuts through. So it turns out that when it cuts through the x-axis, that means something. And when it bounces on the x-axis, that means something different. So let's check out these definitions now. First of all, if a graph crosses the x-axis, that associated 0 has an odd multiplicity. That corresponds precisely with the green zeros I've highlighted on the graph below. So if it just strictly cuts through the x-axis, that means the multiplicity has to be odd. It could be a multiplicity of 1, 3, 5, etc. And there's other details that inform us specifically what odd number it would need to be. If a graph 
touches the x-axis and bounces off, so I'm going to frequently call it just bouncing, then that zero has to have an even multiplicity. So if it bounces in one of these two ways, that's understood to be an even multiplicity. So hopefully that distinction is pretty clear. The options again are either it crosses through and it's an odd multiplicity, or it bounces and it's an even multiplicity. As much as I can, even though it gets a little tiring, perhaps to relate to your, your uh, prior knowledge, just remember, for example, y equals x squared. I know you all have worked with this quadratic before, and maybe we never really realized that y equals x squared um, right, technically bounces at x equals 0 because that's an even multiplicity. It has that 0 twice, so in case that connection helps for what it's worth. Let's look at a slightly more crazy polynomial example. So you can see in the one shown now on the screen, we have um, a graph. I gave you the function it came from in its factored form. Our job is to identify all the zeros and then to note their multiplicities. So our emphasis in this example is not even on our ability to do algebra. It's more just using this new understanding of the zeros and their multiplicities. So let's just start by jotting down what are the zeros. That's where we cross the x-axis. So those are the points shown in red. So we can tell x equals negative 3 is 1, 0. So I'll just make a little column of the zeros here. Uh, another 0 we can tell is x equals negative 1. And last but not least, x equals 2. So we have three different x values for the zeros here. But now we need to talk about the multiplicity. And to investigate the multiplicity, let's not only use the graph, but also the equation of the function. So at x equals negative 3, would you consider the graph to cut or bounce? So when it passes through negative 3, it truly cuts through, right? It's not like it's bouncing off of that point. So I hope that's enough for us to tell it's an odd multiplicity. And in a minute, we'll get even more specific using the equation of the function. So for now, let's say it's an odd multiplicity. How about at x equals negative 1? Is that cutting through or bouncing? It does look a little different than the x equals negative 3, but still it's definitely passing through. So it's definitely not bouncing. So that would again need to be an odd multiplicity. We'll leave it at that for the moment. Now at x equals 2, this is fitting that perfect idea we talked about a moment ago of bouncing, right? It approaches 2 and then it bounces off on the same side of the x-axis. So x equals 2 has to have some sort of even multiplicity. If all I gave you was the graph, what we just wrote down for multiplicities would have been adequate. But because we have the function as well, let's be more specific with these multiplicities. It turns out the multiplicity is no different than the exponent associated with that zero. For example, x equals negative 3 would have come from the factor x plus 3. And if we ask ourselves what the exponent on that term was, there is no exponent, so it's understood to have an exponent of 1. So more specific than an odd multiplicity, its multiplicity is 1. 1 is odd. x equals negative 1 would have come from setting the factor x plus 1 cubed equal to 0. And the power here indicates that the multiplicity of that 0 is 3. That factor is repeated three times. Last but not least, when we set x minus 2 quantity squared equal to 0 and solve, we get the x equals 2, 0. The exponent there of 2 indicates that its specific multiplicity, more so than just even, is its 2. So hopefully that starts connecting a little bit of the equation of the function as well as the graph. What do you think? Maybe one more graphical example? 
to clarify. I bet I could even give you guys just a function and that would be sufficient as well to tell the zeros and the multiplicities. So let's try it. Let's say we have x minus six to the power of three, x plus one to the power of four, and x plus three squared. Let's make again a chart of the zeros and their associated multiplicities. And here we can be specific right off the bat. So the zeros would come from setting each factor equal to zero. So if you set x minus six equal to zero, you would get x equals positive six. If you set x plus one equal to zero, you would get x equals negative one. And if we get if we set x plus three equal to zero and solve, we would get x equals negative three. All right, and then we'll just note the multiplicity for each of those. And I didn't even graph this one for you, so feel free to, oops, multiplicity. Feel free to graph it if you feel like that would assist with your understanding. I highly encourage you to do so. But because we have the actual equation of f of x, we can get the multiplicity right from the exponent. So x equals 6 has a multiplicity of 3 because that factor is being cubed. x equals negative 1 has a multiplicity of 4 because that term is being raised to the power of 4. And x plus 3, last but not least, let me see, I need one more color here. So this term is being squared, so it has a multiplicity of 2. That's the kind of analysis we'll want to feel comfortable doing if we have a really good understanding of zeros and their multiplicities.